just did a we just did a episode episode 317 with Haran Mikhailian where essentially the Armenian National Assembly has the lowest trust in terms of institutions whereas in a parliamentary country uh, it's supposed to be the opposite it's a, it's supposed to be the source of trust yeah I also wanted to uh, turn to this more critical probably issue right now for the country. The ambassador from the very beginning said that oh, there is no relationship between security and democracy. Let's not connect these two things. Uh, because quite a few Armenians have thought that it was democracy that weakened us and allowed uh, authoritarian Azerbaijan to prevail. And it's a common uh, kind of take. I would not agree with that because um, there are many studies in the field of IR on uh, how different types of regimes have uh, fared in war against each other. And I don't think um, it's uh, fair to say that it was because of democracy that Armenia really was not able. But if you have an authoritarian regime and it's facing a regime that is not stable, Right? It's neither authoritarian nor democratic hybrid, just as the uh, economist um, uh, has uh, placed Armenia in its ranking. Right, Hybrid. We all know in this way. It is uh, worse than two authoritarian regimes facing each other. Obviously, it's worse than democratic regime facing authoritarian. And the uh, obvious uh, advantage that democracies have is they are able to mobilize people in an honest process of mobilizations, unlike authoritarians who shove them in or take them in the streets to go and fight. But uh, again, I, more critical for me was the security part of the conversation with the ambassador, because I know that there are so many in uh, Yerevan now uh, talking about the uh, change of paradigm, Russians out, the West in. A, I didn't hear the ambassador say that openly. It's almost like they are adding more voices, right? I mean, more Westerners are talking about it. It's the talk of the town. Now all the Canadians are talking about it. Now we're going to have the Swedes. Now we're going to have the Brits. Everybody is talking. And, and there is only uh, Russians, <laughs> right, who have to address this. So the more voices about the change, and people are, are often, I think, confused about these issues. We have part of the elite that is not really trained in, uh, is incompetent, even in uh, very critical positions of the government, incompetent on issues of security. And yet uh, they are the ones who are taking the shots right now. And they believe that uh, by uh, switching the sides or escalating it with Russia, I noted that Pashinyan was not among those who celebrated, although that's a pro forma, a protocol thing, right? Elections are over in Russia, they're congratulating the leader for being uh, re-elected or whatever. Uh, there is no, I mean, maybe there is. I mean, I've just, I haven't seen. I haven't seen it in the Russian news feed. I haven't seen it in the Armenian uh, news feed, right? So they are trying to capitalize on this anti-Russian stance. They understand yes. that's what is going to bring more support. And that support they want to materialize, right, from the West. Okay, Canadians. Uh, see, and um, it's uh, it's it's really dangerous and precarious because Pashinyan, I think, just the other day on uh, in his longer than three hours interview, was uh, talking about things that um, are really uh, uh, I don't know. I I didn't even know how to react. Go to ahead that. and say it. Well, I mean, he's not for that Russians that Russians. I mean, I'm not quoting. Uh, I will try to stay as close to what I heard him say that Russians did everything possible to have Artsakh Armenians deported or leave so that they can come to Yerevan and create a rebellion against him and his regime, his government. Well, yeah. This is nonsense. I mean, but, but he's saying that. He's saying that. And it's not like, I mean, Russians are not following what he's saying. Right? Uh, and uh, his or... mouthpieces are on the media every day saying, like, you know, Russia is begging Erdogan to attack, you know, and it yeah. is a very dangerous uh, rhetoric, in my opinion, and completely not based in facts. I don't think Russians are going to overreact to those things. They have too many other instruments to make it very painful for Armenia. Unfortunately, not for Pashinyan himself, but for Armenia, make it very painful for Armenia. Uh, that's that's what makes this whole thing. Yeah. Pretty I'm not saying Russia is easy to handle diplomatically or anywhere, but if you cannot. And you came to power in 2018 
by promising to have brilliant relations. And then you've been uh, talking about the best relations ever with Russia, right? Even yeah. in the post-2022 war period, you were ta talking about that. And then all of a sudden, things started to collapse. And there is a question, why? What happened? Russians uh, got worse than they were. Uh, but I think it's uh, more incompetence than anything. They simply don't know how to work with Russians. And they have their own preferences, but they simply do not know how to work with them. Arthur, thank you very much for bringing that context of democracy versus security or democracy and security, because that also absolutely stuck yeah, in my Yeah, I just want to give you a few quotes that I just uh, looked up before the show. You know, uh, one of them is security is the indispensable foundation of liberty. That was uh, spoken by Dwight D. Eisenhower. Hope you enjoyed this clip from our podcast. Click on the link to listen to the entire episode. And remember, your support helps us get the word out. So please donate to us at podcasts.groom.org or scan the barcode on your screen. Please like our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our content with your network. Thanks in advance.